All right, good afternoon at this point. I'm Dr. Duke Majin. We are at the Duke Spine Institute. We're performing a repair of a herniated disc in the cervical spine at C5, C6. It is by far the most common herniated disc. Number five, six, shot. And our patient is having pain in the neck Shot. Okay, shot. <clears throat> so I want to make sure using the x ray machine that we're at the proper disc that needs to be fixed. And if we count from the top of the spine, the cervical spine, you can see there's a tall bone up there near the jaw. That's number two. The one below that is three, four, five, six. I have counted C five six. Luis, you agree? We're treating C five six. So we're at the proper disc. I have the MRI in the room. I'm looking at a sagittal view that mat matches up with the X ray, and I'm looking at two, three, four, five, six. Yes, five six. So we have now entered the disc through the front of the spine using a needle. That is the first step, accessing the proper disc or discs um, through an anterior approach. Shot. All right, this is just before we inject dye. Shot, I felt the dye go in. Wow, look at the tear in the back of the disc. That's massive. So all the dye has leaked out through the tear in literally a microsecond. That's how big the tear is and it's now around the dura and the nerve roots. Pretty cool, you can actually see the indentation of the herniation back there as well. All right, so we have just done what's called a discogram. This is not the same as the lower back ones or the thoracic ones because it's not evocative. It's just what's called a, lico, it's called a chromodiscogram. Chromo means color, so it's a discogram just for coloring the disc. Our patient is asleep. This is the front of his neck. His Adam's apple is here. And this is the front of the neck. And by the way, he has an absolutely beautiful neck. We like long, beautiful necks because they, um, they make the surgery go a little easier. All right, so you can bring his blood pressure up if you want to get him around 100, 110. Shot, I'm now removing the um, needle and I'm leaving the guide wire. Guide wires are quite interesting concept. Basically, you access the part of the spine that needs to be operated on using a tool that allows you to orient and navigate shot directionally. And that tool here is the needle. And we don't really talk much about the needle, but I'll take a moment to talk about it. The needle is a spinal needle, and it's not just any needle, it's a very special needle. It has a tip that is beveled, and it allows me to navigate. Because of the bevel, I can twist the needle, I can go up, I can go down, I can go left, right, and I use the x-ray to guide the needle. Once we get the needle in the right place, we put the guide wire through it, and now I know we have a safe path that takes us from the outside world to the part of the disc that needs to be fixed, the annular tear and the herniation. I've injected some medicine to the skin. Why would I do that, needles up? Because this medicine has numbing medicine in it, so it doesn't hurt the patient when I cut him. Even though he's asleep, he could still feel it and respond to the pain subconsciously. His blood pressure could go up, his heart rate could go up. So we still numb up the skin even when people are under general anesthesia to avoid reflex responses to pain, which are, are uh, controlled by the brainstem. The brainstem is the medulla oblongata and the uh, midbrain and the pons. Four millimeter incision. So basically, uh, the, uh, the medicine also contains epinephrine to narrow the little arterioles that have muscle in them and their walls and to basically, how's our blood pressure? It's, it's 
That's fine. Yeah. To basically uh, uh, keep the, the, bl the blood vessels from bleeding. Okay. All right. Shot. So now I need to advance this dilator over the guide wire down to the disc. I have to do that nice and slow. We take our time. We don't want to tear anything shot. And this dilator, really what it's doing is it's literally just spreading open things without actually cutting them. There's no cutting surface on the tip. It's quite literally just a spreader, not a cutter. Cutting actually damages tissue. Spreading, sp spreading doesn't, okay? Spreading tissues doesn't damage it. Shot, we're there. I could feel it. Now let's get an AP. We're going to look at another view with the x-ray just to make sure we're in the right spot. We want to be in the center as much as possible. All right, any questions from our audience so far? This is our second cervical Duke laser disc repair, perfect collateral uh, of the day. Uh, the next case is a lumbar, two level. Uh, no, no questions yet. All right. So the steps here of the Duke laser disc repair endoscopic surgery is to get to the herniation through the front. The herniation is actually just in front of the spinal cord. And the spinal cord is one of those things you never want to mess with because it's a bundle of delicate nerves and every one of them is important. Shot? So basically damaging the spinal cord is really something everyone wants to avoid. Now herniated discs can actually damage the spinal cord because they shoot out backwards right where your spinal cord is. Shot? So we're trying to avoid damage to the spinal cord by removing the herniation here. Shot? All right, I'm just gonna have to take the guide wire out and I'm in, again spreading the fibers of the disc and the jelly of the disc, spreading them open. Shot? Now our patient, and by the way, your, your orbit is off. I don't know if you can see that. The back of the bone is double. You see it? I think um, my side's too low, if you have to ask me. My side's too low, but go ahead, shot. Ah, uh, didn't fix it. You gotta raise my side, I believe. Shot. Uh, uh, I don't know, it looks, whatever you did looks worse. What do you think? That is, I think better. Uh, right? Yeah. That looks better. Whatever you did. All right, so we're just about to the back of the disc need to go a little further shot I want to get right in the herniation right in the tear shot that's right about there okay everybody agree with the right disc before we do this two three four five six five six that's what we're consented for that's what our surgical plan was so we just want to make absolutely sure now I'm gonna bring this little tube down you all see this little metal tube that's going down the dilator and it's going to slide down into the body. And again, gently I'm twisting it, rotating it, just so it doesn't grab onto anything that is passing by and cause damage. So sometimes you can tear a little vein. No big deal. But honestly, why have anything? Try to be perfect. So everything I do, I've perfected. This is over 1,000 300 laser surgeries, Duke laser disc repairs I've done in 16, oh, 15 years now, 15 and a half years, going on 16 years. And we've never had a single complication. Um, our patients do very well and they all spend about an hour recovering and then they go home, they're discharged. And when I say home, I mean, if they've come from out of the country, out of the state, they go to the hotel, right? but it's a figure of speech in medicine to say going home. From our standpoint, we're discharging them to their temporary home here at the hotel down the road. Questions? 
All right. No, not yet. Why do we do live stream? Sum it up, John. One word. Education. Yeah, teaching, education, shot. Okay, education. So our goal here is to educate everyone, the public, doctors, nurses, uh, everyone about what's, what's available, what's the most advanced spine surgeries available in the world. And the reason we do that is because there are so many places are so far behind. You know, there are hospitals and doctors doing surgeries that were developed 50, 100 years ago. And they shouldn't be. These surgeries are highly invasive and damaging. And even the more modern surgeries of fusion and artificial discs are still too invasive and too damaging. This surgery you're watching is the most elegant, least invasive, most successful surgery with the least chance of complications that's available in the world for a herniated disc. And we're broadcasting so you can see just what is available and just how good it is. So as soon as I'm done here, we're only fixing one disc. We're gonna go see our post-op patient, the first surgery. Uh, she's about ready to go. And I didn't, I'm not letting her go home yet because I wanna see her. And um, I have to do this surgery first. So we're gonna go check on her in a little bit. All right, we're heading down the rabbit's hole. And we're not going to find any rabbits here, unfortunately. We're going to find herniated discs. And herniated discs, I'll adjust the focus. A herniated disc really is two parts. There is the tear in the annulus, my laser. And there is the um, uh, herniation of the nucleus. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we have a new animation. I don't know when Zach is going to have that done, but I need it done. Should be done this week, honestly. We keep changing it. Like, it's done, but we don't have the voiceover yet, and we don't have, we tried a voiceover, but we weren't really entirely happy with the voiceover and the music. We had it to piano music, which, you know, nothing wrong with piano music. My kids are classical musicians themselves, but I have to say it was, it lacked energy. And, uh, and we decided to, to give it to our YouTube video specialist who is working on a new score. And hopefully we'll be able to have it ready for us today or tomorrow latest. So that animation is gonna show you how a herniated disc the anatomy of a herniated disc and how it causes pain in the neck, in the arm, in the leg, and the headaches that come. You're gonna understand it all through the animation. And it's the things that I've been talking about for years. It is the basis of why the Duke Laser Disc Repair Procedure was created, there's a herniation, and why it works, okay? Why this surgery actually works to cure pain in the neck and back and thoracic. It has everything to do with the annular tear, the herniated disc, and a little old process called inflammation. Yes, inflammation. It's actually quite simple, to be quite honest with you. If you understand inflammation, everyone's had inflammation in their lifetime, right? Dr. Rafferty, you know, the thing that I think of that mimics a herniated disc the most with respect to inflammation and pain is a thorn, like a splinter in your finger. Okay, we've all had a splinter. Everyone's had a splinter. And what do we know about splinters? Well, you've got a foreign body, which is the splinter, the wood from the plant, and it's sitting inside your body in your finger or toe or wherever. And it's that thing being there, your body recognizes it as foreign, not supposed to be there, okay? Not foreign in a discriminatory way, but foreign as in this piece of wood shouldn't be here in the body. And therefore your body attacks it in an effort to get rid of it. There's the herniation right there. 
your body literally attacks the splinter or wood. Um, the other thing you can think of is a zit, a pimple. A pimple is an infected air follicle. So what's the foreign body in the infected air follicle? Anybody know? Bam, there's the herniation. You all want to see this? It's pretty cool. Let's turn the light on. In a, in, in a pimple, the foreign body is bacteria. Bacteria. See that right there, guys and gals? See that? John, zoom in. Yep, we see it. That is the, a piece of herniated material, disc, herniated disc, right there. Okay? Bam. And there's my little grabber. It's an endoscopic grabber. Look at my finger, just for comparison. Look how tiny that is. So we grabbed it in the back and pulled it out. Here you go. Where do you want it? Lights off. Lights off. So we're just going to take all these little pieces out one at a time until we get them all. How many little fragments of herniated disc are there? Don't know. You can't tell on the MRI. Everybody's different. You know, I'd say it ranges from probably five to... Uh, hello. Are you ready? Yeah. Zane is mesmerized with my teaching. I love it, Zane. Thank you. But no, seriously, uh, these are all pieces of collagen or scar tissue, basically, uh, that shouldn't be here. They're out of place. Let me grab that out, too. You can see the golden color. It comes from the calcium within the scar tissue. And this is uh, the end result of inflammation scar tissue all right now inflammation is a normal part of healing but it's limited okay it's limited inflammation when the inflammatory system goes haywire and you get too much inflammation for too long of a time then you start getting problems like scar tissue and calcium and bone spurs and that's what we're dealing with here okay and every one of these patients virtually that I see has had their injury for years, and all those years of inflammation have led to the disc being damaged more, leads to degenerative discs. Okay, there's another piece of herniation. Maybe I can float this one out. Floating saves time, as Pennywise says. They all float. Oh, look at that piece of herniation, it's beautiful. So we're getting like a bunch of chunks right now. This patient's going to be so happy when his surgery's over. And we're going to do another testimonial. One of the thousand that we have. Um, yeah. By the way, I, I, have a, I had a question from one of my patients. They said, uh, had the surgery done. Was in, I'm in my back brace all the time, but I'm having pain. The back brace causes pain, OK? For those of you who don't know that, anytime you put a brace on your body, it restricts your movement. By restricting movement, it creates pain and soreness in the muscles. Unfortunately, uh, when you have this surgery, you need to immobilize your neck or back for about six weeks in a brace. And the reason is we don't want to re-injure the disc. The only problem with that is that it is going to make the muscles hurt, and people get really bad muscle spasms. That's why we give Flexeril to patients, because after surgery, they're going to need some of that Flexeril to deal with the muscle spasms. And, and it's not the muscle spasms from the surgery. It's muscle spasms from the back brace. And that's also why we do therapy. We do the therapy so people don't get the muscle spasms. But the problem is a lot of my patients don't don't complete the therapy as they're supposed to, which is six weeks of therapy, and they end up uh, just kind of winging it, and um, they end up with muscle spasms. So, you know, ultimately the muscle spasms, 100%, they go away once you get out of the brace and you start being normal again, moving your body normally. But for that period of time where they're braced in a neck brace or back brace, they can get a lot of muscle spasms. Braces are not fun to wear. They're uncomfortable. They're not just unsightly, they're very uncomfortable. But, you know, you're basically preventing re-injuring the disc with the use of the brace. So it is still essential that you wear it, but it is gonna cause muscle spasms and the way you're supposed to deal with that is with therapy, okay? Doing therapy. And the best therapy you can do by yourself 
is walking every day, walking. Twice a day, 20 minutes. That's why I tell all of our laser patients and fusion patients when we do fusions, you need to walk. You need to walk twice a day for 20 minutes. So what does walking do? Walking is amazing. It's probably the best cell therapy there is. What happens is when you're walking, you're actually moving your back, moving your neck, and it's restoring normal movement to your spine by walking. And you can't walk rigid. You got to swing your arms. So there's actually a technique to walking properly. And some people, honestly, they forget how to walk because of their back and neck pain has been going on for so long. So we have to do something called gait training. And gait training basically means teaching the patient how to walk again. All right. So why do people forget how to walk properly? Luis? Because they, uh, they, uh, they guard. They guard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They guard. That's correct. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if you, if you have a spine injury, like a herniated disc, and you try to walk normally, it hurts. So they favor one side or the other. They walk with a list, L-I-S-T. A list means, you know, walking to one side. And that list and that favoring creates um, basically a pattern of strain and stress in muscles and joints that you shouldn't have. And it's only there because you're in pain from the disc herniation. So once the herniated disc gets fixed, then you can go back to being normal again. Let's go pretty extensive damage here in the back of this disc. That's what we're seeing, a lot of uh, damaged disc. I'm gonna try to improve our visibility a little bit. Let me see if I can zoom in. Now we're already zoomed in. Let me see if I can improve. There we go, it's a little better. All right. So you gotta be careful with these scopes. You don't wanna put a lot of stress on the scope itself, on the um, tube, because you'll, you'll actually fracture the glue that holds the fiber optic wires together. And then they'll become out of position and you'll get a blurry image, which you don't want. It basically have to repair the, the endoscope. Um, but that said, um, if you had a rod lens, same thing. You can knock the lens out of position and you'll get a blurry image. So um, scopes are expensive to fix, thousands of dollars every time. So I try not to damage the scopes. Um, and you have to be just real careful. I used to damage them more frequently because I was a little more aggressive with uh, pulling and pushing. But now I learned to put my pulling and pushing actually on the, the tube, the metal tube, rather than on the, the shaft of the scope. See what happens when you don't ask me questions? I just kind of ramble. Um, but this is getting near the end of this disc. Um, so I'm excited. Everything's going really well for our patient. I'm very happy. I'd say less than five minutes left, doctor. And, and then we'll, we'll be able to wake him up and send him back to Canada with a, a new spine. Okay. He has a lovely wife who's here and she's been very involved in his care and uh, very nice people. I think he's had this pain for 15 years, if memory serves me correctly. 15 years, right, Luis? So this patient had a herniation 15 years ago. He's been living with it because nobody has fixed it for him. Nobody's known how. The doctors refuse to do surgery for pain because they know their surgery doesn't work for pain. And uh, of course, he's in Canada, which is somewhat of a socialized medicine country. Uh, America's getting there too. But um, in the end, he found us online and said, hey, I want my life back. And of course, his wife said the same thing. I want my husband back. And here we are. And I think we're pretty much done. I'm very happy with that. You see the smile there? Go back and rewind, you'll see a smile. 
The spine is smiling to me. Hmm, you know, whoever knew that spine surgery could be so entertaining? By the way, for those of you who are wondering, Duke Spine Institute broadcasts all of our spine surgeries live every week. If you don't see us broadcast, it's because we're not doing surgery. Um, you know, so we do it because we want the world to participate and enjoy what, what I love, which is spine surgery. And I figure if other people can see it and appreciate what we do, then maybe they'll love it as well. We're the only place in the world that broadcasts spine surgeries live on the internet for the whole world to see. Um, and we're the only one that does every single surgery live. And we have over 1,500 surgeries now, all on YouTube. And we have an archive here at Duke Spine. All right, you ready, John? We're done. So as opposed to the last patient that had three herniations, all causing pain, this patient has one. And there's the incision, four millimeters, put some pressure. And again, we go through the front of the neck with the Duke laser disc because that's where the herniation is. It's in the front. It's just deep inside. And what it's in front of is the spinal cord. So going through the back of the neck to finish, fix a herniated disc doesn't work. Uh, but going through the front does. And there are some places that go through the back. I won't mention their names. They do what's called a, a foramenotomy or laminectomy. And it just doesn't work, folks. Um, don't do it. Don't buy into it. As a surgeon, I can do any spine surgery I want, even here at Duke Spine. I go through the back, I go through the front, I go through the side, but the fact of the matter is this surgery you just watched is the most advanced and best for the patient. That's why we do it this way. Some people don't realize that I've done over a thousand ACDF fusions on the neck. Pin, I need a pin. And they think, oh, you do the endoscopic surgery because you don't know how to do an ACDF. No, I know how to do ACDFs. I know how to do artificial discs. I know how to do T-lifts, P-lifts, X-lifts, A-lifts. Anything you want, I can do it. And I've done it. And I do it very well. It's just that this surgery is so amazing. It's so minimally invasive. And the patients recover in one hour. They're done. Of course, it takes a year for the disc to fully heal and get strong. Uh, but it, the, the actual pain relief comes within a 24 hours at most. So, all right, we're going to go check on our first su surgery. And I'm going to come over there and answer questions.
that was probably one of the things I noticed right away was that like I had some control again, which was kind of cool, you know? You still have that sort of, your brain's relearning where things are again. So now that you're, you're back to getting healthy, it's, it's starting to come back. You're starting to feel like you're, you're able to play. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I'll play. This song is called Oscar de Grouch Goes to the Movies. So yeah, we're a pretty musical family here. We do a, play a lot of shows. We're in a band called Positive Chaos, and uh, this is my bass. Picked it up a little while ago. Um, we use it for acoustic shows. This is actually our guitarist's acoustic guitar. Um, he actually just moved down here. All right, we're clearing for takeoff. There we go. This is how normally I'm running about like this. I've got my arms out. Uh, like I said, after about an hour, it was getting excruciating pain just going across my back. And uh, he's fixed all that. As long as that's fixed, I'm ready to go. Thirty years ago, I used to run motocross, cross country, did a lot of different things. Uh, but one of the biggest things I did was had a bad motorcycle wreck during that and did a end over over the handlebars and basically planted my head straight into the dirt and it jammed top of my neck, messing up three herniated discs. Uh, so I've been dealing with that for 30 years. Seems like a long time for me once you're living it. And finally, it just got to be so bad at the end, especially when I go to drive the RV. As soon as I hold my arms out for the matter of an hour, just the way the steering wheel is positioned on the, on the RV, it just takes, sends excruciating pain across my back, gets down to my hands where my hands are numb, me and the wife, we have to pull over, rest stop. After two hours, it's incredible. I just got to get up, take a break, shake my hands. Well, if you're going on a long trip, two hours don't get you very far. Just like lifting up this, I was having a hard time getting into my engine compartment. Just every little thing that you take for granted seemed to become a bigger problem and bigger problem as far as my neck. I went to Dr. Duke to try to get fixed and he did an expert job. Looks pretty good. Fixed it all up for me. Went in through my neck, went around to hit the back of the spinal cord. I, I still don't know how they do it. Unbelievable. Uh, but no scars, didn't hurt at all. As You know, when I woke up, it was totally painless. My surgery was done on a Thursday. I went back to work Monday, pretty awesome. Once I've gone to the Duke Spine Institute, it's amazing, once you take that pain level down, it's like, whoa, there's nothing. I mean, it's night and day. I mean, I just can't even describe it, how good it is. You know, I feel like a new man again. Now that I'm back driving the bus again, it is fantastic. Now we can get behind the wheel, drive for a good eight, nine hours, and then take a rest where I want to and not where I have to. What a difference. Fellas, I'm telling you right now, if you've got the pain I've got, you call me. We'll talk. Anybody can call me anytime. 321-403-8757. We'll talk about the pain. If you've had this, you're gonna wanna get rid of it. What a great place right here in Rockledge, Vieira, where we can get rid of it right there. I wish I had known this years ago, but I did laser, Duke Laser Disc Repair. It was great. My name's Randy Quick, and if I have anything else, I know where I'm going. I'm going to Duke Spine Institute.
right, we're clearing for takeoff. There we go. This is how normally I'm running about like this. I've got my arms out. Uh, like I said, after about an hour. Come on. I feel, I really feel great. I mean, well, before the operation, I could only walk up maybe 100 feet and I had to go back in the house. Now I could walk pretty much two miles every morning. In fact, they marvel at me at the gym that I'm able to do what I can do there. I'm kind of an inspiration for a lot of people at the gym. <laughs> My name is Greg Spadaro. Um, this is my father, Jack Spadaro. We are from Connecticut. We moved down here. For me, it's been about 20 years. I think my father's been down here a good 24 years now. And uh, we've been two individuals that have kind of suffered with back pain and problems for a good portion of our lives. My situation started back in 1964. I had uh, an injury bowling in uh, it was not a, not a serious injury, but someone at the time recommended me going to a chiropractor at that time. And uh, I went to this guy and I went to see him and he uh, ended up uh, rupturing my disc. That was the first operation. It was a neurosurgeon in Hartford, Connecticut named Dr. Scoville. And he did an excellent job and for years after that I was fine until I got here in Florida again and my back problems started again. But uh, we went up to uh, Tampa. I had several uh, laser surgeries done, which actually only aggravated my situation. And then locally, we had a neurosurgeon here that uh, became well, well uh, respected as, as, as an excellent surgeon, and he operated on me twice. And my situation only got worse. Uh, I, had, I was bent over with the pain in my left side for a long time, almost two years. And then I heard my son telling me about uh, Dr. Duke. And uh, so I ended up going up to see Dr. Duke and explained my situation to him, how I, I was uh, in such pain and such. And he, he took an x-ray and evaluated me and he showed me on the x-ray how my operation actually had come apart. The diffusion that they, they did locally here was, had come apart and it was, the, the nerve was being impinged on by the, uh, the bone. So um, he recommended to me that, he, that we needed to be operated on and he told me what he was going to do and how he was going to do it and that, uh, that he felt he could help me. He was so convincing and I was so desperate at that point because of the pain I was in that, that I had ended up going ahead and, and we did the operation. He did uh, L2 to S, S, S1. So four levels. And it was a major operation. And uh, thank God, uh, thank Dr. Duke that he gave my lifestyle back again because from the, from the moment after we came, we came out of the, uh, the uh, recovery room, I was able to stand straight. I told my, even that time, even though I was still under anesthesia, I said, I could feel I'm standing straight with no pain. He even made me dance a little bit at that point in time, you know, which was kind of funny, you know, but uh, I've never, I, outside of the, uh, I've never taken any pain pills. I mean, it's amazing with the kind of pain that I had originally. That after the operation, it was totally gone. And, uh, so from my standpoint, my lifestyle is back. I stand straight, I have no pain. I go to the gym twice a week. I walk every day. And there's very few things that I can't do at this point in time, especially at 80 years old. I'm very proud to say that. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't stand and hold him like this before the operation. Come on. I feel, I really feel great. I mean, well, before the operation, I can only walk up maybe 100 feet, and I had to go back in the house. Now I could walk pretty much two miles every morning. In fact, they marvel at me at the gym that I'm able to do what I can do there. I'm kind of an inspiration for a lot of people at the gym. <laughs> I still do all the, all the maintenance of the house myself. I do the lawn, 
fertilize, I, do, I trim the bushes, I do the pool, uh, I, I do pretty much everything. The fact that I can do this now uh, is, is unbelievable. I couldn't walk, I couldn't lift a finger until, uh, until I had the operation. It's easy to recommend to Dr. Duke and his staff up there because they're professional in every stance of the word. Uh, my operation, as I say, it, it was a big operation. And uh, as far as pain medicine, I didn't have to take any pain medicine after, after the operation, which was significant because I'm allergic to pain medicine, which causes other problems for me. So I would recommend Dr. Duke and his staff uh, without reservation. Come on. I feel, I really feel great, I mean. Well, before the operation, I could only walk up maybe 100 feet and I had to go back in the house. Now I could walk pretty much two miles every morning. In fact, they marvel at me at the gym that I'm able to do what I can do there. I'm kind of an inspiration for a lot of people at the gym. <laughs> My name is Greg Spadaro. Um, this is my father, Jack Spadaro. We are from Connecticut. We moved down here. For me, it's been about 20 years. I think my father's been down here a good 24 years now. And uh, we've been two individuals that have kind of suffered with back pain and problems for a good portion of our lives. My situation started back in 1964. I had uh, an injury bowling in uh, it was not a, not a serious injury, but someone at the time recommended me going to a chiropractor at the time. And uh, I went to this guy and I went to see him and he uh, ended up uh, rupturing my disc. That was the first operation. It was a neurosurgeon in Hartford, Connecticut named Dr. Scoville. And he did an excellent job. And for years after that, I was fine until I got here in Florida again and my back problems started again. But uh, we went up to uh, Tampa. I had several uh, laser surgeries done, which actually only aggravated my situation. And then locally, we had a neurosurgeon here that uh, became well, well uh, respected as, as, as an excellent surgeon, and he operated on me twice. And my situation only got worse. Uh, I, had, I was bent over with the pain in my left side for a long time, almost two years. And then I heard my son telling me about uh, Dr. Duke. And uh, so I ended up going up to see Dr. Duke and explained my situation to him, how I, I was uh, in such pain and such. And he, he took an x-ray and evaluated me and he showed me on the x-ray how my operation had actually had come apart. The diffusion that they, they did locally here was, had come apart and it was the, the nerve was being impinged on by the, uh, the bone. So uh, he recommended to me that, he, that we needed to be operated on and he told me what he was going to do and how he was going to do it and that, uh, that he felt he could help me. He was so convincing and I was so desperate at that point because of the pain I was in that, that I had, ended up going ahead and, and we did the operation. He did uh, L2 to S, S, S1. So four levels. And it was a major operation. And uh, thank God, uh, thank Dr. Duke that he gave my lifestyle back again because from the, from the moment after we came out of the, uh, the uh, recovery room, I was able to stand straight. I told my, even that time, even though I was still under anesthesia, I said, I could feel I'm standing straight. All right, good afternoon. I'm Dr. Duke Majin, and today is actually, I believe, July 20, 2021. And we're here at Duke Spine Institute, and we're wrapping up an anterior cervical Duke laser disc repair. We went through the right side on our patient from Canada. I did a repair at the C5-6 disc. He had a herniated disc in the back of the disc with a tear in the annulus fibrosis. What that looks like, folks, so you understand 
is uh, right here. So this is a disc. This is the back of the disc. This is the front of the disc, sides. And basically I went through the disc with a little tube, okay? And I got to the base of the herniation and I used the laser to zap away all the herniation out of the foramen. This is the foramen where the nerve root is. And then I cleaned up the tear. All that was done at C5-6 and our patient is now waking up, coming to the recovery area. And we'll be doing our third case in a short bit, which is a lumbar two level, C L3-4, L4-5. So what questions do we have? Um, does it take a year for the nerves to heal in the thoracic area? Especially with pain. Does it take a year for a thoracic disc repair, Duke laser disc repair, thoracic spine for the nerves to heal over a year? No, not at all. When we do the Duke laser disc repair surgeries, the pain goes away immediately. The pain that the patients come with that is coming from a herniated disc, that goes away immediately with the surgery. Literally, they come out of the operating room, that pain's gone. Um, what what, hap what takes a year is for the back of the disc to seal off and mend. And it doesn't hurt for a year. It, as a matter of fact, it's painless. The healing is painless. You don't even feel it. But the important thing is that during that first year, it's easy to re-injure the disc and have another herniation. If you get too aggressive with your activities, you're lifting too much, bending, playing physical sports too soon. So. We actually have a recommendation of no contact sports for a year, lifting only up to 40 pounds for a year, and don't bend over and pick things up from the ground for at least three months uh, to be safe. If you do all that, you should be fine. The chance of reherniation is very low. For people that do have this surgery and they do reherniate because it does happen, it's about one in a hundred patients that reherniate, one to two percent. Um, so, and it's, it's usually because they bend at the waist or they, um, they are doing something they're not supposed to do like Greco-Roman wrestling or, you know, MMA fighting. I mean, I don't know. There's all those very physical sports that could re-injure the disc if you do it too soon. But again, re-herniations are not common and they're always associated with some type of activity that the person did they should have done. Just about every case. Any other questions? Um, yes, does going through the front cause any harm to the disc with that approach to access the back? So the question is, does going through the front of the disc like you did, does that cause any damage to the disc? And the answer is no. And I'll use this um, pencil as to illustrate what I'm talking about. So you see this back here? That is the herniation. And the only way to get to it is to go and take the whole disc out or to go endoscopically through the disc with a tiny little um, hole, get to the back and then use the laser to zap that away. That's what we did today. Every other surgeon is gonna take your whole disc out, scrape it away, and then put a cage in there and a metal plate. So what I'm doing is I'm literally spreading the fibers open in the front of the disc. And as I go in with the with the pencil to the front of the disc, it literally pushes the fibers apart. I go in and do the surgery down here like this, and then I take this out and the fibers close. So that's what the disc looks like after I leave. It is totally undamaged. Great question. Anything else? No, that's all. All right, hope you enjoyed the surgery. The next one is a two-level lumbar, L34, L45.